Good morning, friends. I welcome you all to the Decode IAS YouTube platform. We're going to continue with the PT Polity series. Thank you. So uh, today's topic from PT 365 is from the topic called borrowings power, borrowing powers of the state governments. So when 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 a central government or a state government, whenever the government when government functions, it requires it requires fund, and that is where they create some sort of a plan that whether we should spend more on a particular area or we should spend less on a particular area they plan they estimate this is called the budget based on which the government plans its expenditure because they have checked some areas from where they can earn or generate some revenue and they will be spending those revenue in some specific areas this is precisely what budget is now as india is a welfare state india has to spend a lot of money in the social and welfare schemes or policies and for that every time there will be a shortage of fund that means the revenue that they are earning the governments are earning and the expenditure over the revenue will always be higher on the higher side so either central government or state governments the fact is they will be borrowing monies udhari lenge because their expenditure is more than their revenue which is their, which, which they are generating so you see this phenomenon where expenditure is more than your when expenditure is more than your revenue this is called fiscal deficit this is called fiscal deficit and fiscal deficit is a very common phenomenon in a in a developing state in a developing economy and this is often and this is often uh, you know taken care of by the fact that the government borrows money and from here the topic comes up that there are certain areas there are certain powers that the central government have with respect to borrow money from either any commercial bank private bank foreign banks foreign countries the central government can borrow now what about the state governments whether the state government can borrow from any foreign bank or a foreign country whether the state governments can borrow external borrowings from the countries which are which are which are there uh, say for example uh, say whether whether state government can borrow fund from us or uk these are the areas precisely now the fact is what now there is an economic concept let me discuss this a little bit in economy i just spoke about fiscal deficit which is when expenditure of the government is more and revenue generated is less this is where the requirement of borrowing borrowing will arise now say for example if this fiscal deficit is monetized that means if this fiscal deficit is being compensated through borrowings and other ways say for example the government is putting a lot of tax just to gain more and more money so as to monetize the fiscal deficit so taxation is another process borrowings could be another process so say for example just for the sake of example the government has increased taxes also and non tax and non tax revenues also say for example fines stuff like that and this particular area is contributing 30% of the fiscal deficit monetization when it comes to borrowing the government is taking 70% just to monetize the fiscal deficit so when a third party will look into this budget of a central government or a state government we are talking about a state government so whenever a third party will look into the budget of a state government it would be very easy for that third person to judge the state the how much it is depending upon the borrowings it is very obvious that if a state is depending 70% on borrowings to monetize its fiscal deficit that means the gdp of that state is actually vulnerable isn't it so because the entire gdp of the state is highly dependent on borrowing that is approximately 70% so the government of india has created a kind of a check and balance a kind of a limitation on the the borrowing powers of the state government based on their gdp based on their state gdp so say for example the central government will say that the state governments are allowed to allowed to take borrowings to an extent of 
of their total gdp of the total gross state gdp that means only up to 3% of the total gdp they can borrow so this kind of limitations the state uh, the central can put on the states all right because eventually all these state borrowings will club and become the the india's national uh, borrowing limitation so the central government is very rightly can uh, put these kind of restrictions now the issue here right now the reason why it is in news is that last year the central government has increased the borrowing limit for states from 3% of the gross st state gdp to 5% that means there is a there is been there has been an increase of 2% when it comes to the borrowing limits for the states so right now the the, the states can borrow up to 5% of their total gdp out of those 5% 1% is directly linked to the four sets of reform measures that the state ought to spend on number 1 on the scheme of one nation one ration card every state government will have to spend here in the scheme number 2 ease of doing business three power distribution and fourth urban local body revenues in all these four areas the state government must spend 1% out of the total 5% of their borrowing limits this is mandatory next this policy incentivizing the states to adopt progressive policies and to avail additional funds so if a state is performing on the lines mentioned in the above four points then it will incentivize the state and the central government to even get more funds approximately 23 states avail additional funds additional borrowings of 1.06 lakh crores why how they got the additional fund more than 5% they got it because they were actually got incentivized because they were adopting the progressive policies which are which have been directed by the central government to agar tum agar koi state government follow kar raha hai central government ke sare uh, reform measures mein spend karna that is a kind of an incentive based on which they are getting some additional value some additional borrowing limitations all right now why we are restricting a government to to borrow money based on their gdp we are doing this because we want to create some sort of a fiscal responsibility because otherwise the state will 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 actually have to sell its entire asset to a particular company or the area from where it is borrowing so their borrowings should not lead to a situation ki state apna apko girvi rakhna pade that is why there has to be some sort of a fiscal responsibility uh, up within the state economy and this is known as fiscal responsibility and budgetary management frbm act so if we consider the borrowing powers of central and state the constitutional provision which talks about the borrowing powers is article 292 where the central government has unrestricted power unrestricted power to borrow similarly article 292 there are some limited power of the state to borrow when it comes to territorial restriction there is no such restrictions the central can borrow domestically and also from abroad when it comes to central the state government the state government can only raise loan domestically a state government cannot take loan from abroad next the state government can borrow upon security of consolidated fund of state agar paisa le rahe hain borrow kar rahe hain to hum apna consolidated fund of india consolidated fund of the state ko borrow karke usko hi as a security bana karke loan lete hain and article 293 the state cannot borrow cannot raise borrowing without the central's consent so these are the restrictions that the central can put on the state government when it comes to borrowing powers i hope this is clear in the next video we'll talk about next topics thank you so much